Good evening, all. This is uh, our second Narcissic Heroes Stronger Than Yesterday video. As mentioned, I'm um, not sure if you saw the last one. I was so exhausted yesterday. I, like, could not move. So um, these were supposed to be out yesterday, but I was exhausted. So they are out today. But the regular schedule will be uh, is uh, Wednesdays and Sundays. So... I like this color scheme, by the way. You know, I've changed them to different colors so everybody can know that it's a different episode. So as I'm looking at it, I like it. Hunter Green's like my favorite color. Okay, thanks, guys. Thank you. <clears throat> oh, and I have to preface with, um, you know, I'm not a doctor. I have to, you know, say all this for a reason. But I'm not a doctor. I just, you know, share my experiences and my knowledge from a patient a patient's point of view and somebody that has gone through you know all the stuff that I've gone through and then I read and share everybody's stories so if you have like a medical question uh you know you're more than a, I mean I'll you know ask but still I'm not a doctor so if it's something general but um if, if you're really having issues you should call like a helpline or something or ask me and I can send you in the direct right direction of where to go if you need some help so let's get I was I was uh, skimming this story and it looks very interesting so but it, like they're all new to me as I read them and I cut off some you know of the pleasant pleasant trees that she had written before um, because we've known each other from Twitter for a long time so let's get started she writes as for my story I was a bit odd as a child but back then it was dismissed as quirky I may have a mild case of Asperger's or OCD as I had a lot of peculiar rituals. Well, that's cool. I liked to like odd kids, like strange, in a good way, you know, like quirky kids. Uh, peculiar rituals, counting, putting my, putting my teddies and stuffed animals in a special order on my bed, like Prince Andrew, huh? Um, leaving only the smallest space for me to lie doing my doing my homework before even taking my coat off being uncommunicative etc etc it didn't become much more than these rituals and still I start until I started po a post graduate course which was a high level and very intense I had not been all that academic at school and my parents always said my sister was the clever one despite that I actually got better results than my sister on graduating. My brother was like inherently like smarter than I was, but he didn't have the drive that I did. Like I was smart, but like I, I put in the work and the time, you know, so that, you know, just because you're intelligent, you have to, people still have to work at things. So I know what she means. I went back to college after I had been working for a few years, so it was a big adjustment and I had to move back with my parents, which was even more of one. I understand. As the course was fast paced, I began to get very competitive. This led to full blown anorexia nervosa. When I when I got down to eighty six pounds, I'm five nine. Wow. And I looked like a skeleton. I was over eighteen, so my parents could not admit me to a clinic and I promised to get treatment when the course was completed. I came to, I, I came top of the class and then went to the Maudsley Hospital, which Pr Princess Diana also attended, although she had bulimia and I was existing on practically thin air as I was hiding food and lying and putting it in my napkin. Um, I'm sure everybody's like heard this, but it, or maybe people haven't like, some people are worried, I think, that um, have anorexia and everything about their weight, but it's it, it's not usually about a weight weight with people. It's like that that's I guess they feel like that that it's a control thing, and that's like the only thing they control or one thing that they control, as I understand it. Um, and I was hiding food and lie and lying and putting it in my napkin. Etc. The psychiatrist was useless and told me to just eat double, which was ridiculous and didn't help at all. I did put on a little bit of weight, just enough to be able to get a job and live alone again. The anorexia continued for probably seven years. No periods, eating only peanut butter or a bag of crisps, 
even depriving myself of water. I was never about, it was never about body image with me. Somehow I managed to survive and was successful at work and very conscientious, 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 <laughs> I can't talk sometimes, and dedicated. Since then, food has always been an issue. I'm incredibly disciplined. Anorexia nervosa is all about control. Yeah, there she, I figured she'd probably get into it there at some point. I will only eat one meal a day and it has to be after 6 p.m. so it can so it can affect my social life. Things things then took a different turn when my mother, who I was extremely close to, was diagnosed with terminal lung cancer. It was hopeless from the start, but she did rounds of chemo, which really ruined her last three months. Cancer is so ugly. And my father forbid me from seeing her. My father was an aggressive man, ex-army officer, who was militant and quite frightening at times. He and my sister were a unit, and my mother and I were, were another. I couldn't accept the inevitable and blocked it out, so when it happened, I fell into a very deep black hole. It probably lasted for a year, and it was dreadful. All I can describe it as is utter blackness. I was suicidal but didn't do anything as I felt my mother would be very unhappy if I did. My father and I were not getting along as he belittled my grief and then began having a fling with a family friend who was 10 years older than me. He even he even talked about their sex life with me exclamation point. This was 3 month um, this was 3 months after my mother died and I had just turned 30. That had to be very hard. I stayed as long as I could and did the best for him, but it was very hard. My sister was going through a divorce, so I tried to support my father as she couldn't. Finally, I couldn't take it anymore, and I was able to immigrate to Canada. I felt this was extremely selfish, but I had to get away, and that, and that was the furthest place I could go. I went because of the memories, not because I was fed up with, not because I was fed up with England, as I miss it a lot. My good friends are all there, and it's been very difficult to make real new ones. It is hard when you get older. I had to start all over again from the bottom up at minimum wage, as my high-profile experience was not recognized. Or they just, you know, sometimes they just don't want to pay, so then you have to take lower jobs. Uh, my high fi my hi high profile experience was not recognized. I had worked at the BBC and Time magazine in London. Wow, awesome! So then you pro she, you probably know because I'm sure you're watching. Um, but then you can probably see what a colossal disaster all that PR stuff and everything. I don't mean to bring them up, but since I know you you were all into this, she probably sees it for what it is. I moved from city to city until I ended up in Toronto. I had worked in London for 11 years and hadn't chosen Toronto and hadn't chosen Toronto initially because I thought it would be too alike. However, I have been here for a long time and it suits me well. It has all the be benefits of a cosmopolitan city and is easy to get around and there are some lovely neighbor neighborhoods. It is very safe too. With the move to Canada, dating was on the back burner when I got to Toronto. Dating was on the back burner, but when I got to Toronto, I did a lot of internet dating just because I didn't have any friends. Understandable. That was not a good experience. Canadian men are ex extremely wishy-washy. I got fed up with it. Then I met a girl at, yo at a yoga evening class. She had a, a male friend called Mon Montserrat. She also had a, had a boyfriend, and he sounded sweet. I told her I'd love to have a male friend just to go out with on a platonic basis. Eventually, she agreed to introduce him, and we met. Montserrat had a Canadian mother and an English father and had lived in the UK, so we had a lot in common. He was called that because he was born in Spain when his parents lived there for a couple of years. Ellen told me that he had some problems with alcohol, so I knew that ahead of time. We went out a few times as friends, 
and then I invited him to a party my friend Lindsay was having. A group of us went out for dinner and then to a nightclub. He was a great dancer, and somehow th somehow things just happened that night. Yeah, it's all, they always just somehow happen. <laughs> somehow things just happened that night, and that was the start of our relationship, totally unexpected. Montserrat wasn't my type at all, a bit Jude Law looking, and he was shorter. Somehow it worked. It was very sexual, and this unassuming guy was hung like a donkey. This will get you every time. He should have been in porn. It was a difficult relationship because he wouldn't get help. He would he would binge and then go cold turkey and get the DTs. And he had an accident when he was drunk where he broke his leg in several places and was an invalid for months. I thought I could save him, but the drinking got worse and worse. He ran a bookstore and lived with his mother, and they were always short of money. It was very hard seeing someone deteriorate and not helping themselves, and I began to feel like I was chastising a little boy. It was very wearing. We were together, wow, we were together for nearly seven years. Then there was a horrible experience when the police were called, and that was the defining moment. I had to get away. So I did. He always said if I left him, he would kill himself, so it was a tough thing to do. I wanted a clean break, but he wouldn't allow that. We were friends for a year. Then I met someone and he couldn't take it. It was only physical and I knew it wouldn't go anywhere, but it was a diversion. He began calling me horrid names and saying my mother would be ashamed. He was very, he was very nasty, so I cut off all contact. Then I got laid off from my job because after nearly 11 years, I had become too expensive and got to the top of my grade. They let me go, and my boss had moved on to another position, so it was hard to get a reference. I had interview after interview after interview, and my confidence was shattered. Yeah, that's searching for a job. Being in the job market's like one of the worst things. In my, I mean, yeah, as far as it's the worst, it's the worst. It can, you know, it can, yeah, it can take your self-confidence away and, you know, worry, the worry, what am I going to do? I thought I would have to sell my house as I couldn't find a job, so, as I couldn't find a job, so I put it on the market. Then one day I found out from my realtor that Montserrat had made an appointment to see it. He wanted to see if I was living with this guy as he was eaten up with jealousy. I confronted him and told him I would never speak to him again, and I didn't. He tried a few times to get in touch, but he never apologized, and I was too proud. The other relationship didn't last as long, didn't last as I knew it wouldn't. Montserrat had his faults, but we were on the same wavelength and were good pals, and there was passion. It has been hard to find that. One Christmas, I was getting so close to getting in touch with him, so close, but thought thought it better for him to move on. A couple months later, his best friend contacted me out of the blue. Mon Montserrat had died. Accidental overdose of prescription meds and alcohol. He was 49 years old. I knew he wasn't long for this, but but had expected around 58. It was so sudden, we, and we had been out of contact for 18 months, utter, 18 months under very bitter, bitter circumstances. Losing him ate me up inside and was dreadful. The guilt haunted me, and I couldn't move on. He had needed me, and I wasn't there for him. It was the worst feeling, just dreadful. His anniversary is on Tuesday, February 8th, and it will now be eight years, which is hard to believe. I haven't moved on or dated, and this has been extremely difficult to come to terms with. I am feeling stronger now and more ready, but it's been a long haul. I wish I, I wouldn't wish that guilt on my worst enemy. After I lost my job, it took me two years to find another one, and that was, and that was for half the money. This was working for a woman. I prefer male bosses. Yeah. 
and she began to manipulate me. After six and a half years, the gaslighting got so bad that I could hardly function at my job, and I walked out at the end of 2019 and didn't look back. It took me a few months to deal with that. Now I am so happy that my life has little stress. I don't plan, in, plan on looking for another job. I am in my 50s, but rent out my basement, and my father died a few years ago, so I have a small inherit inheritance. I will be fine. Somehow, I keep myself busy, and I have worked for over 30 years, so deserve a break. Absolutely. So, there you have it. I don't think I, don't think I have had an easy life at all, but I have got on with it and made the best of it. I don't men tell many people my story is there is no need. I am, I am not pretentious and have simple tastes and take pleasure in the everyday. I am positive and optimistic and truly believe the best is yet to come. Life's not, that's what I even say, life's not over. You never, you know, you just never know tomorrow, you know, and, and, and it's so cliche to say, but like, it, yeah, life's not over. Um, I am not pretentious and have the simplest tastes and take pleasure in the everyday. I am positive and optimistic and truly believe the best is yet to come. I have always been in unlucky in relationships as Montserrat was my only real love, but even at this stage, but even at this age, I seem to have come into my own and men find me quite attractive. Well, you are. I know what you look like and you are quite attractive. Whereas my in my younger years, I was overlooked. I am still not dating, though, as it, an exhaust, as it is an exhausting process, but I am open to meeting somebody in another way, vacation, through a friend, at the supermarket, etc. I am so glad that you have a partner. I think we both wish, wish H, HG was in our future, though, huh? Absolutely. <laughs> Which goes to say something, you know, it's like, is there something wrong with me that I like, I like a narcissistic psychopath? Probably. There are many things wrong with me. Uh, but yes, absolutely. Voices are more important to me than looks. Absolutely. Because looks go away. They go away. And Montserrat had a lovely voice, too. I'm so sorry this is so long. Like I've told everybody short long if they're short if I get you know get a little group of shorter stories you know I do want to give everybody you know their own video but sometimes they're shorter stories and I can just you know depending on what they say but longer ones too whatever like I said whatever you guys send me it's gonna go up you know as I just keep going through the emails as they come I'm so sorry this is so long but it is cathartic to put everything out there you were working incredibly hard for a cause and we are all behind you. Well, thank you and I'm behind you guys. I wouldn't be able I wouldn't be do this if I didn't have support. I mean, you I have like the best audience ever. You are tireless and never stop and are so driven. You, you are extremely articulate and perceptive. Well, thank you. Harry and his wife have unknowingly created a lot of thriving communities and given us a purpose given us a purpose in the pursuit of truth absolutely absolutely okay, I couldn't agree more you will do extremely well with whatever you pursue you are going far thank you and so are you you know it's like I, I, I hate cliches but attitude is everything everything you just Got to know that tomorrow's another day. We are resilient and just getting stronger. Thank you for allowing me to write this. Thank you for writing it. You can take parts of this story or the whole or ignore it. I appreciate the opportunity to put it out there. If I can be, ever be of assistance with any research, etc., I'd be delighted to help in any way, and I'm, any way I can. And I'm sure she means that help with anybody in their stories also because I know who this is so if you have comments or anything or questions you know I can get everybody in touch with everybody or you know whatever wishing you continued success and every personal happiness thank you thank you thank you you too moi um 
uh, let me see. So here's the email. Again, it's NarcissicsTriumphs at gmail.com. That was a great story. It was a great story. Um, sad story, but great story. Good attitude. Been all over the place with a bunch of different things. Um, isn't jaded. It's hard not to be jaded, but isn't so jaded to not want to try anymore. So, again, if you have your story, email it to NarcissicsTriumphs at gmail.com. Um, and uh, look forward to your comments, as she probably will, too. And um, that's it. If you like the channel, please subscribe. Hit the likes and notifications. And I'm going to try and get one, maybe a couple. It's only 6.30 where I am. So I like to give everybody a little time to watch these videos, though. You know, because I don't want to take, you know, by kicking, you know, more videos out about this to take time, you know, take attention away from everybody's story. So uh, it just depending on what happens um, or I'll get one out later, but I want to get caught up. And then we'll, um, you know, do the regular Sunday. So talk to you soon.